fund from somebody is going to give you uh, 5 million dollars of cash yeah. to work for you can't have a guy who is not competent right. to uh, run his show he need, i want to, you know what the investors say do you have a cfo correct no, what are you there's going to a, say to that i think um, yeah. it's an interesting one probably there's an opportunity <laughs> for your organization yeah, because we have done that he is willing to pay <laughs> if you can get him 20% <laughs> less that can be your profit yeah. straight away correct, yeah. so there's an opportunity there let's take any other question that is uh, there. yeah please yeah there's a gentleman here yeah please uh, so one of the problems so we run uh, primary healthcare centers in tanjavur uh, dr balaji has uh, visited us uh, so one of the problems that we face is in terms of building local capacity uh, as in we from from our perspective the entire management team comes uh, from outside of tanjavur and we have sort of uh, tried to evolve this model over there so what we face is a very big problem in terms of getting local building local capacity and trying to see if we can get a local talent to head the local or, i mean the operational entity so can you can you share your views views towards that because we see that as a very big problem uh, in terms of our setup see um probably i'll take yes, this sure. question um it was a challenge initially for us to be able to find talent which is local which has the bandwidth to handle the task but is no rocket science so therefore we had to get people who are extremely motivated passionate to go anywhere they like but after a while um what we call ipms uh, idiot proof methods um the investment that you do in systems and processes so that the time that it takes and the skill that is needed to do a job is much limited uh, once i went to an advanced country um uh, i went to this fast food place and i said can i have some french fries that person looked at me very blankly like that as if i spoke some french or German or Japanese. That's it. So, maybe my accent was bad. Uh, then I didn't understand why he's not understanding. Three times I repeated the question. Then in the back there was all these lovely pictures of fries and all that. I said that one. Oh, number eight. Sure, I'll get it. Hmm. So the system they have done it in such a way. Now I might call it French fries. I might call it aloo ke patake or whatever stuff. But that guy knows very clearly this is what the customer wants is written there. It's very easy. So it'll take a little while. It'll take a little while. once you build the systems then anybody can run it is no rocket science but initially like you said we didn't know what you're getting into kind of a thing in when you're creating the first emergency healthcare system for the country nobody has a clue how to do that but and though you bring capability from outside as you build it then lot of that becomes clarity comes in and at the point of time you don't need uh, you know rocket scientist to do those jobs i don't know if i answered your question yeah there was we'll take an order last one so i just told you time Yeah. yeah first of all thank you great session and good insights uh so as a young professional i think i'm less concerned especially at the entry level i'm less concerned with the compensation but what worries me more is the lack of clarity in my you know career trajectory after joining the social sector i just wanted to hear perspectives from both the talent acquisition side and the entrepreneur side as to what we can do to bridge this kind of concern you should probably ask the plans of uh, the uh, guy who is hiring you what are the plans for this organization is it going to grow or are you still in an experimental stage or what is the potential to grow you, that you have to use your judgment probably at that point of time because uh, one thing which we always used as a bait was okay today it's it's hard work toil but this learning when you when it grows when this organization and you are the first mover uh, there you can always get into the next level and the next level when this grows so you can probably evaluate an organization's growth potential before you ask you know before you take a uh, a job offer <coughs> second uh, uh, i think uh, why would you like to join that social sector first of all what's your motivation to join an organization like that and why that particular organization amongst is it only for a job or is it something more than that that you are looking out for so you need to answer those questions have clarity within you before you probably look out for those kind of a things yeah <clears throat> so he also obviously pointed to you didn't want to call rajiv so entrepreneur perspective <laughs> so keep it very short so that we go to another question there is one more question there yeah, yeah. Uh, you want me to comment, comment on him? Comment? No, I mean, uh, uh, are you no, looking for a job? job? <laughs> <laughs> There. There, I think uh, this you panel will get ten percent commission on whatever happens. <laughs> Fair enough. So that's the hiring charges for free. All right, um, gentlemen. Yes. Uh, it's uh, for some 
people it's very easy or rather it, they make their mind to join a com organization non profit organization but when it is for non profit there are a lot of dilemmas in a person uh, how, how the growth is going to be in future especially financial growth so uh, many of my friends ask this question i don't have any answer so what's the possible answer for this first first i think the probably the answer is in your question uh, then if there is not there then i'll ask first of all he has been saying that social sector is not for profit the only fellow who is not for profit is here me so he is talking about profit all social enterprises are talking for profits so we can talk privately to say how uh, i will deal with uh, people who are working in my organization yeah because without but profit you can't profit sustain is saying you can't sustain he's going to make profit. money I, he's I getting totally believe that. got a sexy office and so there's no problem yeah like like jack sim you know he's the yeah. world toilet organization yeah. he says you have to you have to be sexy yeah. i mean that's what changes everything and yeah, um, yeah you have to I actually mean, he profit new acronym <laughs> sanitation health international technology <laughs> Yeah, sounds very cool. <laughs> yeah, all right. That's what he said. It's a charity. Yeah, yeah. Please. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Thank you. Um, I'm a, I'm a fellow for one year in a social enterprise, um, and I must tell you that I have a small frustration that I have not been used at the maximum. Um, is that normal? I mean, is it? <laughs> I will. It's a very it's a very good question. Is that more? And more? Uh, the second question would be um, because the people who are developing social enterprises they tend to make uh, their babies and care a lot more than um, other people care for their baby businesses. Um, you also, I think it's normal to have a, a tendency to control more, um, which comes with um, a necessity, in, my, in our case, is translated into you have to hire people who, who sh should be able to unlearn after they join. Like to forget everything what they learn and start unlearning um, from I am wherever they come from. Um, so the second question would be: um, Is it normal for? I mean, is it necessary once you are joining a social enterprise to switch your um, to come there without the baggage and to start working without the baggage? Right. Because you have to have different challenges, all so those challenges. But the first question is more important. Yeah, the first question. <laughs> No, no, I think uh, there is a first question. I was also, uh, I stand guilty here. When I was heading uh, CSR Ram of Satyam, Satyam Foundation, uh, ISAC people came and they said, we will give you some international interns. And uh, we are a very diversity freak. So we took a matrix map and said, you know, women, men, you know, uh, Eastern, Western, uh, all, all kinds of races, etc. We did a beautiful thing. Even Ravi was involved at that point of time. We did all of the planning, invited them, but we didn't plan what they will do when they come. So actually we had to face when one of the interns was so frustrated that uh, uh, she broke uh, down almost in the office. So I didn't understand what I was walking down and everybody was consoling her. I said, what happened? And I said, I've been here for about a month. There's nothing much for me to do. I'm just twiddling my thumbs. I thought I'm coming here to serve the world, etc. I mean, my dream is all broken. I understand what you're saying. I think uh, it's a lesson for Indian <coughs> entrepreneurs, enterprises when we invite interns that we do a thorough job, professional job, plan for it, only then invite people. We will never invite people home without having preparing the food and then taking care of them and drink appropriately. So I think in this case, there is a lot of intent. And the second one that happens in smaller enterprises, especially when they are growing, is that we somehow think people figure it out. And uh, different cultures have a different need for structure. Uh, probably the need for structure, if you see on our roads, you will understand that we have no need for structure. <laughs> uh, but I think that's a, that's a great uh, comment that made. I think it's a lesson for all of us. And I'm sure budding entrepreneurs who are there. And uh, we are guilty. Many of the organizations don't, even a large organization like Satyam did not think well in advance, like a job description, what they need to do. Can I, well, first, definitely you are not having a very good experience. <laughs> but there are many people that that have very good experiences. And I think that some learnings that we had, because we, we have been running this program since 2004, and many people after their fellowship programs, or they, they, 
they keep uh, working with these organizations, where, or they come back to their countries and start a new enterprise. So I think that some learnings that we had, first, the match is very important. So you have to both prepare not only the intern, but the organization. And I totally agree with what he said. The organization must be prepared to receive. You must have something in mind. And also the, the, the intern, the fellow, the, the, the person uh, should be prepared. I think all the knowledge we bring is very important. If, if, if the match is right, you can take the opportunity to use your knowledge. Uh, in the other hand, it's important for the person who comes to understand that if it's a small enterprise, maybe uh, we have to be flexible and, and to understand that things will change and we, we have to adapt. And also to consider that there are many different learning experiences. Sometimes we only think on a career path, but there are so many opportunities of learning, so being very open to all of this. But most important of all, previous preparation for, from both sides. I think we'll take a last question. Yeah. There was a question, a couple of questions that side. We've been left, so from leftist to rightist, we will move. You have a question, then we'll come back. Okay. Is that okay? So maybe you can pass on the mic to her, so then. <laughs> Um, I, I hear embedded in some of the conversation that um, the notion that um, like the pedigree of school that people come from equates talent. And sometimes I feel like the experiences that I actually have would be more valuable to an employer than some of my friends who are graduating from more prestigious universities. So I'm curious as employers um, in social enterprise, like. Are there certain qualities that you are there certain qualities that you value more than perhaps the school or the degree that um, a, a, a person has acquired when you're looking for talent and um, you know what might those be? What are the qualities that you feel are actually most important to actually so. doing well in your company and I supporting your company? I think commitment is the biggest quality that I would look for in my company. And commitment closely followed by, uh, you know, and let's say an aspiration to grow within the organization. So, for example, if you're looking at, if you're working, working in our company, for example, uh, you know, I could, like, like when she said that she had a problem or whatever, that she's not so happy with what she's doing. Had she come to our company, you would be thrilled. Because we had an intern <laughs> who came to work. I'm not kidding you. I came to work with us from France. She worked with us for two months. She had a super project uh, which we organized for her. And I'm not kidding you, but the, the, the apathy was that she went and got a job in Ernst & Young after that abroad. <laughs> so it seems to be the way. So, but, but yeah, I mean, you know, if a person is committed and uh, is, driven, is driven by the cause, passion, extremely important. And if you have a clear goal in front of you, I think uh, social enterprises uh, are like any other enterprise, really. So, Pari, so, I think Raji has taken your cue very quickly. He's already selling his company say, to uh, people. I'm just going to say something exactly for a second. There are three things which are absolutely key and essential, and it doesn't matter what stage you are in uh, when you start off an enterprise. One is definitely you need to have some sense of salary. So, you need to have an initial template or a structure in place. The other blueprint you need is an organogram. And the third thing you need is some ready templates that you can start with for job descriptions, which you can keep building and adding on to. And uh, it's absolutely imperative to try and see how your organization can auto run through templates. Great. I think uh, I may have to excuse uh, for not allowing you to ask your question because she's already positioned herself there and giving very polite indications that you should I don't have it. a new question. Uh, you have a, don't have a question? No, no new question. Uh, All right. It, so all of the, uh, I can assure you my panel would be available somewhere around okay, between Malabar and Konkan. So you can catch them there. And uh, thank you very much for being such a wonderful panel. It's been a pleasure. I've learned a lot. So by the time you came out, your picture would come. Thank you. That's wonderful. Thank you so much.